In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the use of CircuitLab.com to solve the circuit here presented in problem 14 from the mesh current method activity. When I launch the CircuitLab.com editor, on the left hand side I will see a number of common components, electronic circuits components, that can be placed on my diagram which will be built on the white space on the right hand side of the screen. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to place my voltage and my current sources. To place the voltage source I'm going to right click on the voltage source and then drag my cursor over to the schematic area and click again to place it. When I place a voltage source it defaults to a positive 1 volt supply. To change that default value I can double click on the component and then change the value in the voltage value uh, text box that opens up. In this example voltage 1, uh, the voltage source 1 has a supply voltage of 50 volts so I'm going to enter that and press return to change the voltage value on supply 1. Looking back at my schematic diagram I also know that I'm going to need a, an additional voltage source to complete this circuit and voltage source number 2 is going to have a specified value of 30 volts. In addition to that, I'm going to have two current supplies in this circuit. So my ideal current supply, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click on the current supply and place it. But before I place it, I'm going to have to rotate it because in the default mode, it's going to have a current that goes from the top node to the bottom node. In this example, both of my current sources are facing the opposite direction. So I'm going to grab this um, again and when it's highlighted I can either right click on it and rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise or flip it horizontally or vertically or I can use the shortcuts of R, Shift R, H, and V to rotate either direction or to flip it horizontally or vertically. Oops, so I'm going to flip this supply vertically and current source number one in the example has a value of 10 amps so to change its value again I will double click on it and in the text box change the value to 10. I also need another current source I'm going to click that and before I place it I'm going to rotate it and then place it on my diagram Again, it's going to default to um, 1 amp of current, so I'm going to double click and change that value to the value of 5 that's required for the, uh, the schematic that we're trying to represent here. After that's done, I am going to move my sources a little bit here so that I can place the resistors in the path. Again, I come over to the left hand column and I grab a resistor and I'm going to rotate this first one, resistor 1 is going to be horizontal and if referring back to example number 14 it has a value of 5 ohms so I can change its value by double clicking and changing the resistance value from 100 to a value of 5. I can repeat this process for the remaining resistors. Resistor 2 is placed over here and has a, de has a value of 100 Oh, excuse me, has a value of 10 ohms. I'm going to change the default value of 100 to the value of 10. And I'm going to repeat this process to build the rest of the circuit. Once I have placed all of the components on my circuit, uh, on my schematic area, the next thing that I need to do is I need to connect all of them. And the way that we connect them is I go to um, one of my components and at the top I'm going to start at the voltage source here, the 50 volt voltage source. And when I go up to the top, I'm going to see that uh, I get the, this um, dot at the top and the bottom of the terminals. If I just click on that dot and drag it, it's going to create a blue line that I can use to wire my components together. And once that connection is made, then um, the blue turns into a gray wire to indicate that the components have been successfully wired together. I'm going to go through the rest of my circuit here and connect all the components as were shown in the example diagram. When I'm joining 
this node here in the middle, I want to be sure that all of my components join together at this node. If I just drag a wire from the uh, bottom of the current source to the top of resistor 5 here, it's going to create this jump over point, which means that those four components are not tied to each other. So to get rid of that, what I want to do is instead of causing the jump, I'm going to uh, delete that wire that was jumped together and then I'm going to um, make sure that I drag my wires so that they meet up at this junction point in the middle here and I get a, a, a solid dot to indicate that those uh, wires are joined together at that at that point. Alright, so I'm almost done here. I'm going to be very careful, make sure I get all of the junctions that I need. Okay, and my circuit schematic is complete uh, in terms of, or is a complete representation of example number 14. Now, to perform the analysis, it's very important in Circuit Lab that we also specify a ground reference. The example does not specify a ground reference, but in this case, to perform the analysis in Circuit Lab, it's going to do to perform an analysis that is uh, like a node voltage analysis. So it has to have a point in the circuit that is going to be the zero voltage reference point. I'm going to choose the bottom node here as my zero voltage reference point. With the signal ground location selected and wired, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to name some of my nodes. This is not necessary, but it can make the analysis portion um, a bit easier. So I'm going to grab the name node element and then I'm going to click on the nodes and it's going to default to a naming scheme of node 1, node 2, and node 3. With my circuit complete and the nodes named, now I'm going to simulate, um, I'm going to use the simulate option uh, to calculate the voltages at these nodes, node 1, node 2, node 3, and I should put a node in the middle here too, node 4. There we go. Okay, so now that my circuit is built, um, I'm going to go, I'm going to press on the simulate button, and I'm going to, right now we're going to be concerned about the DC analysis. Alright, later on we'll worry about uh, time domain and frequency domain analysis, but uh, at the current juncture we're going to use the DC analysis and I'm going to have to add some expressions uh, so that we can view or measure the voltages at these points. So I'm going to click on the add expressions button over here and it provides me with a text box where I can specify uh, what I want to measure. Uh, we won't do that right now. The easiest thing to do if we want to measure a voltage is I can go over to these nodes that I've created and I see a little pen icon comes up. When I do, uh, when I get that pen icon, I can just click on the node and it's going to add that node as an expression. So I have node 1, node 2, node 3, and node 4. And you notice that they are um, expressed as V in the, in the parentheses node 1. What that means is I want to solve for the voltage at that node that's specified. So the voltage at node 1, the voltage at node 2, 3, and 4. Once we've identified where we want, um, that we want to uh, measure or uh, simulate the voltages at those nodes, once we've added all of the expressions that we're interested in, I can click the Run DC Solver button, and it's going to um, give me the results of that analysis. So node 1 is going to have a potential of 159 volts with respect to the ground reference that we specified here at the bottom node. In addition to measuring voltages, I can also specify that I want to measure currents through different components. The way that I can measure a current through a component is I can click, an add, click the Add Expression button, and instead of specifying a voltage, I'm going to specify a current. The way that I do that is I type an I, open parentheses, and in that command box or in that uh, parentheses, I'm going to specify which um, element that I want to know the current through. So right now let's do one for resistor 1, so I'll type R1. And then the way that Circuit Lab is built is that each 
uh, this resistor has two terminals. So each resistor is going to have a node A, what they call a node A and a node B. Um, to specify the node that I want to measure the current either going into or out of, I'm going to uh, have to specify that node here in my command. So I type R1 and then dot and then I need to specify a node which would be N, lowercase n, um, and capital A. All right, and with that command in place I hit return and that is going to uh, give me, now if I run DC Solver again, it is going to solve the circuit and tell me that the current passing through resistor 1 is negative 4.458 amps. Now, we're going to have to be a little bit careful in Circuit Lab because we're going to have to look at the voltages at the nodes. Uh, we know that the voltage at node 1 is 159 volts and we know that the voltage at node 2 is 187 volts approximately. So we know that conventional current is going to pass from node 2 to node 1. Um, our results indicate a negative value, but that's because we specified node A. And the node A is the what is typically referred to as the going into node of the resistor. Um, if I edit this expression and look at the current passing through node B, the other side of the resistor, and I run the DC solver, I will see that my current changes direction. So when measuring currents, be careful about the direction and use some intuition about the voltages at the nodes to understand the true direction that current is actually passing. In addition to measuring the current, I can also measure power dissipation by different components. So I can do this again by adding an expression and my expression now is P, open parentheses, and then the name of the component for which I wish to measure the power dissipation of. So let's go ahead and measure the power dissipation of resistor R1. I put that in the parentheses. If I run my DC solver again, it is going to give me a value of 99.38 watts. And I can repeat that for all of these, uh, for all of the different nodes. I can also do math within, um, within these expressions as well. So if I want to know the potential difference uh, from node 3 to node 4, um, I can do things like that as well. Finally, when you're happy with your circuit um, and you've done the analysis, you can save this circuit by using the File menu, and it will save it uh, at, onto your account within the circuitlab.com uh, website and so that you can access it at a later time. So with that we've covered the basics of how we build a circuit and we run a DC simulation on it. The next video I'm going to talk a little bit more about how we can use uh, CircuitLab and how we can set up uh, dependent sources within our circuits.